a senior aquarist here at Modern Bay Aquarium, and I'm super excited to be talking to Dr. Drew today about sunflower stars and then also some of the work that you've done. But yeah, so as Kristen mentioned, we have our sunflower stars, and these are actually, they used to be found in Monterey, but in 2013, a disease called sea star wasting disease actually wiped out all of the sunflower stars in Monterey Bay, and you can no longer find them here and pretty much all of California. And so these sunflower stars are actually a result of a spawning attempt that happened with Birch Aquarium down in San Diego and Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach. They were successfully able to get their sunflower stars to spawn, produce hundreds of thousands of babies, and we were fortunate to get some. And this has been a huge collaborative effort between a variety of institutions, aquariums and zoos. Uh, Moss Landing, we have the Sunflower Star Lab and Moss Landing Marine Labs have been a huge part of this. But yeah, so we've been working on the animal care aspect and culturing these, but Dr. Drew here has been doing a lot of the research aspect and learning about what, all about sea star wasting disease, what's causing it and what happens to the animals. So if you, Dr. Drew, could talk a little bit about your work with diseases and maybe touch on sea star wasting disease? Yeah, sure, Ellen. It's really great to be here. We've been working on uh, the wasting disease since 2013. And right away near the beginning, we discovered the sunflower stars were one of the most susceptible in over 20 species along our coast from San Diego, well, actually South San Diego, all the way to Alaska that are affected. And so we worried because I'm a disease ecologist and we knew that a multi-host pathogen, COVID's a multi-host pathogen, right? It affects multiple hosts, uh, could really do damage to the most susceptible. So we were watching and um, sort of sounded the alarm about an extinction risk for the sunflower star. And uh, that unfortunately is what's happened. Uh, they haven't gone extinct, but they're highly threatened and endangered in California and a little less so to the north because actually this is related with warm water events. Uh, making this outbreak worse. And so uh, we've been studying the impacts to the sunflower star. We've been trying to uh, investigate and we've been successful in figuring out the causative agent. Uh, and that's a multi-group effort um, as part of the sunflower star recovery program. And also we've been studying the immune system because we want to know how to make them stronger and get back uh, in the ocean. And then finally, um, the lab I work at, Friday Harbor Labs, is the place where the original captive breeding methods were established that are now incredibly cool, being picked up by all these big aquaria uh, around the West Coast. So it's a pretty exciting time. Yeah, definitely. Um, lots of research going on. Everyone's you know, trying to figure out different components of this to try to really bring back these sunflower stars and be able to eventually uh, have them in our oceans again. And, you know, we're talking about just one species, sunflower stars, but, you know, how, you know, they really play a huge role in our kelp forest health. And so could you maybe touch a little bit about um, why sunflower stars are important for kelp forests? Yeah. So sunflower stars were as common as a robin underwater if you were a diver before the 2013 outbreak. Pretty amazing. We would always see them, few of them on dives. But their ecological importance wasn't fully understood until they all disappeared. Uh, and then we found massive outbreaks of sea urchins decimating kelp forests. It's been particularly problematic here in California where the kelp forests have been really mowed down uh, by urchins. And you're going, well, you know, how much trouble can a sunflower star really cause? Oh my gosh, the captive breeding efforts have really shown that even these little guys are shoveling up so many tiny urchins. They gobble them up whole. They have to be tiny. Yeah. They gobble them up whole and spit out the spines. The big sunflower stars, and it's the largest star in the world, this big, uh, can swallow big urchins whole and uh, spit them out. So they are a force uh, to control the underwater seascape. Yeah, definitely. I mean, right now those sea urchins are just mowing down our kelp forests. Unfortunately, there's just not as much kelp as there used to be. 
could you maybe touch a little bit on, you know, we've talked a lot about all these groups that are involved with the recovery of the sunflower stars. Um, where are we at with it right now, just with their general recovery? Are we getting close to releasing animals or are they, yeah, like where are we at with it? What are we learning? I have to say the sunflower star recovery program, and this is involving a whole bunch of institutions, I can't even begin to name them all, uh, 70 plus scientists. It's a big, big program, largely funded through diverse sources, including the Nature Conservancy. It's really exciting because we're at the point of expanding the captive breeding effort. We're at the point of sort of knowing uh, more about what the causative agent is and being able to monitor it and work, work around it. Uh, we're, we know a lot more about the immune system and uh, the Nature Conservancy is talking about breeding for resistance um, and expanding the captive breeding program. So there are very few programs other than the abalone on the West Coast that actually have this kind of recovery effort for an invertebrate in the ocean. Um, but remember, this is the biggest, this is the biggest star in the world. And earlier you mentioned too about climate change and how it may be playing a role in this disease and causing these outbreaks. Uh, could you touch a little bit more on that? Yeah, a lot of the work that we do in my lab, we're a disease ecology lab, but we always work on uh, ecologically important species. So foundation species like coral and seagrasses and how they're affected by the combination of climate warming, making their disease outbreaks worse. And this one was a classic example of this, um, uh, that uh, warming trends in the ocean really fueled the intensity of this outbreak. And that's partly why there are no sunflower stars, kind of, pretty much, <laughs> in California. But as we go further north, um, they slowly start to come back in. It is an endemic species only on our west coast, uh, and um, it's suffering a lot from warming events. Um, uh, synergizing, combining with the disease. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, two things coming together at once, unfortunately, cause some bad things for our sunflower stars. So I don't know if we have any questions from our viewers. If you want to know anything about sunflower stars, <laughs> diseases, what role can aquariums and organizations play in helping uh, support? It's been really exciting to me to work with a number of the aquariums, including um, this incredible aquarium, Seattle Aquarium, other, other uh, California Academy. Um, and uh, the captive breeding effort is really important. There's been major breakthroughs by various aquaria. For example, cryopreserving the larvae, that is an enormous advance um, that will allow us, <laughs> the, the bigger group, to preserve genetic variation, because we don't know how the disease may change through time uh, and thus get worse and thus require even more stringent efforts than we have underway. Um, so I'd say the captive breeding program, we've already started to test the releases through J uh, Dr. Jason Hodin's research at Friday Harbor Lab. Um, so there's a lot, there's an enormous effort to try to get these species back in the ocean. So um it's been great talking to you dr drew about the work you've done with sunflower stars and uh the diseases unfortunately sea star wasting disease um, but if our viewers want to learn more about you or uh maybe have a book coming out where can they find you at <laughs> well i actually am on social media uh you can find me on instagram at drew coral find me on Blue Sky. Um, I just opened a TikTok, but we'll see if I actually get on that. But I would love to just say a little bit about this book because I'm super excited about it. It's coming out on Earth Day this year. And it's really about, you know, the, my passion for a life of diving in the oceans. And I think of these invertebrates as kind of the playground of life. Um, I like to talk about the fact they've been in our oceans for over 600 million years. Dinosaurs are only 200 million years old. So these are ancient and they are full of incredible um, solutions for human challenges. So I would love to have you tune in to my um, social media, but buy the book. You can find it pretty much anywhere and even pre-order now. Oh, that sounds really awesome. I, I can't wait to read it myself. 
I love animals, obviously. <laughs> thanks for your uh, interest and thanks for letting me come. <laughs> yeah, well, it's been great having you here, Dr. Drew, and I can't wait to read your book. Um, and if you know anyone here is interested in learning more about some fire stars or some of the other work we've been doing here at the Aquarium, uh, be sure to check out monterreyaquarium.org. Uh, it's been uh, great seeing you all and talking with you. Yeah, Thank you. wonderful yeah. time. Thank nice you to meet you. Too.